Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. My name is Namso Akpan. Um, welcome to today's live cast, where we're going to be talking about our initiative, um, The Young <coughs> Shall Grow. Yes, The Young Shall Grow. Um, let me see how many people we have now. I'd like to keep this according to schedule. I know I'm Nigerian and we have what is called Nigerian time. Now, what, I, what happened was I was talking and I was hearing myself come through. And it's like, oops, I didn't get everything set up right. But we're rolling and we're rolling good. Um, Okay, um, the Young Shall Grow program. Now, let me tell you a little bit about um, this program. Um, how many people do we have? I'm still trying to figure this out. We have um, one, two, two people watching. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go over three o'clock as we scheduled today. That's three o'clock Atlanta time, which is gonna be eight p.m. Nigerian time. Um, for those that don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Namso Emmanuel Akpan. I'm the CEO of the Georgia Independent Movie Industry Association and also the CEO of the West African Independent Movie Industry Association, which is being created as we speak in West Africa. We're starting from Nigeria, Cameroon, and going towards the West um, all the way to Senegal. So we're hoping within the next um, few months we would have hit Dakar um, where we have some partners already there um, laying the groundwork um, for us to, to, to get in deep in Dakar. The Young Shall Grow initiative um, was created mainly because we understand that the young shall grow. You see, growing up as a young man in um, West Africa, in Nigeria, I was, I was one of those that um, came up, I like to come up with a lot of ideas, a lot of business ideas. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. But unfortunately, in our system there, there wasn't anything laid out, apart from people telling me to go to school apart from having to go and get an education, there was nothing really laid out to turn my talent into a, um, a sustainable system. There was nothing really out there for me to be able to borrow money as a young person. There was nobody out there able or willing or in a position to help me take whatever idea that was in my head and turn it into a business. It was as if nobody understood or realized that sooner or later I would, I would grow. And as a growing young man, I would need things to help my business. I would need things to invest in my business so that when I become an adult or a young man, I can, I, can, I can have a business. But you see, we grew up, I grew up in a community that education, education, everybody ta was talking about education, which was right because I had an opportunity of going to get an education. Let's fast forward 35 years later. We're in the same situation where young people are coming up with brilliant ideas. But what's interesting is that I've noticed that even some parents have not self-actualized yet, talkless of being able to help their children 
self-actualize. Um, Patrick, how are you doing, Patrick? Um, it's nice that you um, took the time out to join us today. Um, Priska, how are you doing also? Um, nice you also. Um, it's important you took the time out to join us because um, Priska is the regional coordinator for our association in Nigeria. I'm um, in West Africa, so it's important that she grows with our organization as our organization grows. So as a young guy, one of the issues that I had was having somebody to invest in me. Today, we have young people everywhere who have brilliant ideas, but they have nobody to invest in them. They have to go to school, which is a good thing. We support school, but we also support. It's like carrying things with two hands. It's good. It's important for you to get your education. It's also important for you to tap into your talent because, you see, your talent can feed you. And the education is just a method of sharpening that talent you have. So the Young Shall Grow program that we're initiating from Aquaibum State all through West Africa is about going into our community, identifying young people with talent, and finding out what they need to turn their talent into money, careers, and employment opportunities for others and entrepreneurship opportunities for themselves. We want to be able to take these young children, these young youth, these young adults, people from the ages of 14, between 14 and 22, and turn their talent into a sustainable venture or business. We're not really just interested in just going out there to train people. There are a lot of people out there training. We're kind of looking for those people that have received some sort of training or have some sort of knowledge or have some sort of talent. And they're ready, they're at the level of infusing some resources, some money into that talent, to develop that talent into something commercial. You see, if we empower one young adult to be able to create a company, that young adult can hire three other people. That's four people that we've been able to empower. The last time I went to Nigeria, which was a couple of months ago, I went into the villages, into the, into the creeks and everywhere to find the resources, to identify resources that we had that have not been tapped. And I tell you, there are so many. Our young people barely know about the past. Most of our young people have abandoned resources of the past. There are so many opportunities that we're going to tap into. If you go to um, our website, let me see if I can pull up that. Um, let me see if I can pull up. Okay. Now, that's our website. If you go there, localfilmjobs.org. Um. Now, when you're on that website, you're going to be able to see information about what we're doing, about opportunities that we're offering, and also, you, you can dig into our website up to 15, 16 years backwards to see what we have done, where we've been, how we started out, etc. But our website is very deep, it's very wide, and it can tell you a lot. But on the, the Young Shall Grow program, we have a lot of information there on our website um, that you can actually go and look at. In addition to that information there, um, let me see. Okay, for more information on the Young Shall Grow initiative, you can 
send an email to our regional coordinator, Ms. Priska at localfilmjobs.org. That's Priska at localfilmjobs.org. And she's going to be able to get in contact with you and give you any further information you're looking for. Now, for this program, we want to tap into the churches. We want to tap into the ministries. We want to tap into youth organizations. We want to be able to empower these youths. As we tap into these organizations and churches, we're also going to give churches, ministries, pastors, all people from all walks of life, the opportunity of sponsoring any of the youths in our community. This is actually a challenge that I'm throwing out to the people of Aquaibum State. For every hundred dollars, for every hundred dollars that you sponsor one youth, I'll personally match that with nine hundred dollars to make it a thousand dollars. That means we're going to be able to inject a thousand dollars per head. I don't care. Come a yemi name is up. Come a droy in a yemi name is up. A man yet talent who name is up. Nam no min crane. Came in ya water and yen I name is up a foot of Milonia. Yes. You see, a lot of things in our past we've abandoned. Years ago, we were the number one in palm oil. Today, we're not. We used to be so high in so many things. Today, we're at the bottom because most of our adults have abandoned African stuff and are craving Western stuff. They are craving some Makaraga Benedi. Well, we're going to let our adults, let the adults continue with their craving. But you see, our youths, we can't allow the youths to follow the adults who are blind. Yeah, I said it. Most of the adults I know are blind. So I'm not personally going to allow the youths to follow blind adults. That's why I'm matching the words that come out of my mouth with my pocket. For every $100 that we have somebody in a Quibum sponsor one youth. I, Jimia, Waimia, our industry will come together and back that youth with $900 in addition to the one to make it a thousand. They are so many little businesses that our people can start from carpentry businesses to food processing to import, exporting stuff. When it comes to importing, I'm really not a fanatic of bringing stuff to Nigeria. I'm not a fanatic, excuse me. I'm not a fanatic to bringing stuff to Nigeria. So, because I'm not a fanatic to bringing stuff to Nigeria, most of our focus is going to be getting stuff out from Nigeria where it can go and get, it, get a nice chunk of foreign exchange and bring it back to Nigeria to be able to improve the livelihood of the people there. So once again, within the next week or so, we're going to be going into the communities, into the communities we're starting in Akwaibo, and we're going to identify talent and these talents that we identify, if they're ready, if they're ready, we're not going to force them. I mean, you can take the horse to the water, but you're not going to make the horse drink the water. So if they're ready, we're going to tap into their minds, into their brains, see where their talent is. We're going to infuse some extra money, help them get what they want partner with them to generate, to grow the business. Make sure their business can, can complement another person's business. There's one saying that we used to say, yeah, 
man makes man shine. Man makes man shine. That includes women too. I don't know why they just said man. But man makes man shine. And women do too. So one tree is not going to be able to create a forest. So we're going to be very meticulous in, in um, identifying the talent. Then investing in the talent. Then we identify this other talent and invest in it to make sure that this talent and this investment can assist this talent and this investment to generate more income for the community. It is something that I've spent a couple of years developing and testing it out so that as we bring it out and unleash it into our community, it's going to do exactly what we want it to do. Because as we're developing Lana Wood in West Africa, our major theme is reinventing Africa, reinventing Africa, basically going back to the Africa that we know and going back to the Africa that we knew and abandoned, picking out the best things of it, picking out the things that can increase the value our value, the value of the black person, both in Africa and in America. And we're going to start generating business. The Young Shall Go program is also going to be part of our bridging, bridging the gap system. Because you see, as I'm in Atlanta, basically I live in the hood. I live in the most popular black community probably in America. I live on Bankhead. Everybody knows about bank. If you listen to rap, T.I. and the rest, they're all, they're all around here, you know. They're all rep bankhead. So living and doing business and, uh, and enjoying with my black brothers and sisters and my white brothers and sisters here, because it's funny, bankhead is supposed to be a black community, but it's not. My neighbors are white. So a lot of things are not the way people think. It is. But um, being here in Bankhead, I've realized that most black people in America have no knowledge of the resources Africa has. What does that mean? That means that most black people in America are not benefiting from the resources that their great, great, great grandparents owned in Africa. I want to remind you that the African-American, the black person in America, that is the African-American, is African. These are African people that were sent here or brought here or came. They're Africans. And one of the reasons protesting has been injected in their lifestyle, I'll say, yeah, it's injected in their lifestyle. One of the reasons is that they they have been cut from their origin. They don't know palm wine. They don't know Mbando. They don't know Nkareka. They don't know Anem. They don't know Abre. These are things that could create millions of dollars for them. These are also things that can create millions of dollars for our youth in Africa. But the problem is that there's a gap. There's a gap. And that gap seizes communication between both continents. That's why Lana Wood is the catalyst. Lana Wood is going to unseal that gap, that mental gap, so that things can flow across. And we want to be able to use our youths, to place our youths both in West Africa and our youths also here in Atlanta and urban America, we want to place them in the right positions so that we can give them a new, I like to call it a new dope. Yeah, I call it a new dope because a lot of black people are ending up in jail for selling the dope that the system has given them. 
But you see, a lot of white people came to America and brought their own dope from Europe. What is the white man's dope? The system, the banking, hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza, all these things that are American were brought by Europeans to America. And that's what creates them the money. That's what creates their wealth. But black people, of the years, the hundreds of years we have been sent here, brought here, walked here, chased here, whatever, however you came here, we have not brought things here of commercial value. 400 years after slavery, the average ex-slave, yeah, let me, let me just use that for the, for the purpose of this argument. The average ex-slave does not know what Gary is. They barely know what pounded yam is. They have no clue about what they left, what they owned in Africa. And because of that, they're here protesting for rights that were born with. Yeah, protesting for rights that were born with. With this program running in Nigeria, we're going to be able to create a lot of things. Now, I have not stopped this live cast, but you guys just give me one minute because I've noticed something technical. Let me check it real quick. That was very, very interesting. I, 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 I had no clue that this equipment is capable of doing things like that. Okay. Okay. Now I learn. You learn every day. You learn new things. And it's like as the new things come across, you have to um, get assimilated to it, get, get close to it, and try to understand what is really happening. But um, I'm learning, 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 and learning more. Let's see if we can get that um, back on running well. Okay. What did I run into? My gosh. Okay. Now I see I need an assistant. Yeah, now I see I need an assistant to be able to help run some of this equipment. The stuff is so complex that sometimes it's crazy for me to do it. But as I was saying, sorry for the dis um, interruption. Um, so this, the Young Show Grow program is going to be that bridge. And it's exciting that we're going to be using young people to lay it down, and to get it started. Um, what areas are we talking about? We're talking about film production. We're talking about the creative arts. We're talking about um, food production. In fact, we're talking about any way, any kind of talent that can be invested in. We're not just looking for people making movies. Making movies is just a little percentage of our industry. What we're more involved with is turning talent into money. I know that um, we're almost hitting the three o'clock line. Um, I said I'm going to keep this 30 minutes. Um, but this, this discussion was very important so I can share with everybody as much. Excuse me. I can share with everybody as much with what we are doing, how we are doing it, and why we're doing it. Turning talent into money is our focus. We're looking for youths. For the youths, they don't have to pay any money. But for each youth, we're going to look for sponsors for them. We want people that can guide them as mentors. We want people that can make sure they do what they say they're going to do before they join us. Because 
A thousand dollars is a lot of money to invest in somebody and they're not serious. So that's how we're going to lay it down to make sure. Okay, I see what happened. The camera was set to go off exactly in 30 minutes. And I started it earlier than 30 minutes. And that's why it went off. Okay, I'm learning this stuff and it's, um, it's interesting, but um, I'll be able to do it. The more and more I do it, the better I get at it. But I'm getting too old for this, so next time I'm gonna have somebody. My equipment is auto, it's supposed to be automated. That's why I decide don't bother anybody coming to work. But next time I'm gonna make sure I have somebody behind there to make sure nothing funny like that happens. So please, Sunday, next Sunday, 7.30 Nigerian time, 2.30 Atlanta time, unless we change it, but it's gonna be around that time. Get people involved with us, get people sending us questions, whatever they want, whatever they wanna ask, however they wanna help, or if you have a young person, age 14 to 22, that needs help, that needs somebody to invest in them. That's what we want to do. From next week, don't be surprised if you're a pastor, a church, a ministry, we're going to come knocking on your door. Yeah. I'm going to come knocking on your door. And if I don't come, Prisca is going to come knocking on your door. And when we come, it's going to be real simple. We're going to dangle $900 in front of you, and we're going to ask you for $100. If you add $100 to the nine, we bless somebody. For every $100 you add to our $900, we're going to bless somebody. And guess what? There are some youth who want to do businesses that are bigger than $1,000. There are some businesses. There are some young people who want us to invest in their business a little bit more than a thousand dollars we don't have a limit if we find a young person who has a business idea that needs ten to twenty thousand dollars I'll personally guarantee that but we're not gonna let that young one person control all that wealth if that idea is real good I'm going to go look for, or we're going to go look for nine other young people who are going to come and own, co-own that business with that person. Then I'll invest all that money because it is not of any value. One person in the village driving a Bentley while the other hundreds walk. I like everybody to have something. I like everybody to have something equal to what their sweat is worth, and what they're, they're able to invest. Um, now, are they, I assume, a lot of times when I talk, there are no questions. I, I don't mind taking questions, but if there are no questions, it means everything I'm saying is A-OK -okay and people are just letting it sink in. Patsy, Patsy the twin, um, how you doing, Patsy? Patsy came into our program. She's involved with um, broadcasting. We are looking for young people to add with her, too. You see, as broadcasters, they need camera folks. They need people driving trucks. They need people laying with the cranes, with all the equipment. Younger people can do this. 14, 15-year-olds can shoot. They can produce while the older people handle something that is more, you know, needs more responsibility. So Patsy, as you're out there, remember, the young shall grow and we have to get ready for them. If we don't get ready for them, guess what the young people are going to do? They're going to rob you. They're going to break into your house. They're going to break into your car. They're going to rape your kids. They're going to do all kinds of stuff just like they do here. In America, People between 14 years old and 18 years old are the most dangerous. Yeah, they are the most dangerous. Half the little kids out on the street got guns. That's why it's important. 
we get into their brains, into their minds, and we share with them the value of not being trigger happy, the value of taking their talent and doing something creative with it, and most importantly, the value of having somebody willing to invest hard coal cash. When I was young, when I was in Rio, I wish I had somebody to invest in me, apart from my parents. My parents did what they could do and what they understood. But there really wasn't somebody who could sit me down and say, how much money do you need to take Onye Kawenu around the world? How much do you, money do you need to, to, to promote Magic Fashik? If I was handling Magic Fashik, which I used to promote him years ago, he probably would not, he probably would still be alive. Because you see, the wrong kind of people handled him and sent him to his death here in America. Turning talent into money is not an easy thing. Turning talent into money also requires people with honesty and integrity because most people want to steal your talent. Turning the talent of the youth into money is even more serious business. You need somebody who can answer the right questions at the right time, especially at the beginning. Somebody like me. Those questions are like, hey, as you're turning their talent into money, what is in it for you? My answer is real simple. I'm a businessman. I invest and we share the profit. If I don't invest in them, who's going to invest in them? And if you invest in anything, you should eat from what you have sowed. So I'm going to eat from what I sow, and I'm going to sow it hard. So if you got youths out there with talent, ready to be turned into money, careers, entrepreneurship opportunities, contact Priska and them, the regional coordinator for the West African Independent Movie Industry Association, um, let me see if I can get you her phone number, her information here again. Um, that's her email, Priska at localfilmjobs.org. Check out that email, localfilmjobs. It's not easy to get an email address that direct because that is exactly what we're about, creating local film jobs. Gentlemen, ladies, my name is Namso Emmanuel Akpan. I'm happy for the time you've spent with me today. I'm going to be here again Sunday, creating, thinking, and coming up with incredible ideas that are going to take West Africans a little bit further than the moon. Lana Wood is here to stay. Thank you, and thanks for being with us.